What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Review. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. We have seen the movie that everyone, not everyone, but for the most part, they seem to love this film, Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Brian, you saw it Thursday. You did a great job of not telling me anything. Um, and I saw it Saturday. And today we are going to discuss, we're going to give it out, we're going to sort of review it and um, let you guys know our thoughts, what we like, what we didn't like. Um, Brian, I'm going to let you go first because you said, you sent me a text that you loved it. I want you to talk to me about what you love and if there was anything that you didn't necessarily like. Um, I didn't love it. I liked it a lot, but I didn't love it. Perhaps it was because I was expecting to see some things that I that I didn't see, but I'll let you take the mic and um, go go at it and tell me what you loved about this film. So first off, as a disclaimer, so I am half Asian, and I do think that has something to do. It colors a bit of how much I like this movie um, and why I like it. I've actually seen it twice already. Wow! I'm going to see it again. <laughs> That's how much I like it. But I'll tell you, there's a reason for that too. Yeah. And I will say, I think this movie rewards the second watch because I think there's some choices they made relative to how this movie was promoted that I think the first time through can catch you off guard in a way that's a little bit unsettling. Whereas if you know it's coming, you can kind of enjoy the ride a little bit more. And that's why I left you guys on the podcast last time saying it's not necessarily the movie that you think that it is. And we'll get into what I mean by that more. Uh, so I really loved it. Uh, I loved what it accomplished. I thought that it was definitely not the movie I expected. But when I left the theater, I had a really satisfied like feeling. I was on a high and I couldn't wait to see it again. And I had to go see it again. So I went back and saw it again. To me, like my overarching thought, I'll start with the rankings. I think most people, I count myself in this, in your top five MCU movies, you probably have some combination of Winter Soldier, Iron Man 1, one of Infinity War, Original Avengers, or Endgame people differ on which one they love the most i do not have ragnarok in the top five i think a lot of people would and then i think you probably would then have a battle for that fifth spot with maybe a black panther uh maybe a civil war yeah. a lot of things that could compete for that spot i think shang chi is in that competition now i think in that for that number five spot for a lot of people they put this movie in there and i think it's going to age really well i think it's as rewatchable almost as rewatchable as anything Marvel has put out there. Um, I think there's a lot of bits and pieces that if you slice this movie into, you can watch five or 10 minutes and be really entertained or laugh or have a good time and and, uh, and and then kind of jump back out. So I really enjoyed it. And obviously, yeah, look, I mean, as someone who is half Asian, I was really proud not just to see the all Asian cast, but I thought this movie was really sensitive and I tried to hint at this point last time on the podcast, really sensitive to Asian cinematic history and Asian culture. There's a lot of things in here. I feel like if you aren't really familiar with Wuxia movies or Hong Kong action, or quite honestly, the way Hollywood has stereotypically portrayed Asians in movies through the last hundred years, maybe you miss it, but like, I feel like this movie tried to get at a lot of that, but not in a way that would like hit you over the head and make you feel bad about it. It was more yeah. of like a wink, a nod, a salute. But at the end of the day, like I thought it was a very satisfying, like fast paced movie that went mm -hmm. by pretty quickly in, mm -hmm. in two hours and 12 minutes. So, you know, we'll get into ratings and details, but and I do have some nitpicks. I do have some some actual like real questions, but yeah. my overall experience was you know incredibly satisfying. And I would say like, I mean, this one is probably as satisfied as I've been since Civil War, like just leaving the theater for an MCU movie. That that's kind of how I'd sum it up. I know you didn't like it as much, but I don't know. You want to give it this overarching view why you kind of left. A little empty, I guess, would be the way to describe it. Well, I mean, I think you would know, um, based on the conversations uh, we've had regarding Shang-Chi and what we were expecting. I think we did a spotlight show. 
-hmm. and what were some of the things that I think it needed to accomplish in order for me to be like, this, this is, this is it. Cause we haven't seen one of these in such a long time. For me, uh, it just reminded me too much um, in terms of the martial arts. It just reminded me too much of, you know, the Jackie Chans and the, the, the I guess the martial arts to me wasn't really as, um, I would say, uh, impressive as I thought it would be. Um, being that Shang-Chi and perhaps he's just coming into his own and he may have uh, or gain the moniker at a later date as master of Kung Fu. It really didn't seem like he was a master of that. So that was sort of um, a bit, not jarring, but you know, I kind of wish that he would impress me with that, with his skill. And it seemed like he, in every fight that he was in, although he held his own against many, but when it came down to one-on-one, -on -one, he wasn't dominating, right? So that sort of like left me a little bit down. Uh, but as far as the movie itself, although it was Shang-Chi and you know, Legend of the Ten Rings, this movie didn't feel like a Shang-Chi movie, more so ah. like, like a Mandarin yes. film. Tony yes. Leung. This he, is a Wen Wu film yeah, with Shang-Chi yeah, in yeah, it. Exactly. Exactly. 100%. Yeah, exactly. It just didn't feel like it. You, the shots with him, his fight, a lot of those things were beautifully done, especially when he met his wife the first time. That was dope. That was dope. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed. It sort of reminded me. I don't know if you guys have seen Castlevania, but you know how Dracula was, you know, Dracula until he met his wife, and then he went out into the world just be, try to be a regular human being, and then they took away his wife or his, you know, and then. He came back to what he, what he was, and um, so it sort of reminded me of that, which was cool. But I don't know; it just didn't feel like a Shang Chi movie. Aquafina was good; she was funny, but to me, I had a I had a, I don't know. I felt a certain way about Wong asking her to come through. Is like she an Avenger now? Like, what's what's the point of her being in in the whole thing? You know, Is she she doesn't have any special power. She just witnessed a few things and she shot an arrow. Okay, so what? So little things like that sort of bothered me, but uh, I don't know what your thoughts. Uh, file that Aquafina thought away because that to me, that whole thing, her whole role and her whole arc is subverting, in my opinion, it's subverting an Asian stereotype in cinema. And that's why they're doing it. I, don't, I think they're, I think it's actually like very deliberate and it's mm -hmm. meant to be, it's meant to give the reaction that you're, you're giving, which is like WTF. And yeah, I, I'll yeah. get back to that in a second. You hit on it. This is a Mandarin movie where Shang-Chi appears. Yeah. Well, I mean, to me, look, I'm obviously biased. You, heard, you guys have heard me talk about this. This was a Tony Leung masterclass, as far yeah. as I was concerned. Because that guy, the facial acting alone, yeah. it, like his ability to make you buy that he really is this empathetic dad but then he's this ruthless warlord in the same sentence. Yes. I thought it was incredible. And the yes. fact that as the movie went on, it became more apparent that, you know, in the beginning, they really portrayed him as pretty one-sided. All right, this guy's, this guy's out to do ill. He just wants to conquer. But then yeah. they really made him complex by having him fall in love with Shang-Chi's mother. Yeah. You then see like he's really being motivated by love and family, mm -hmm. albeit in sort of a twisted way. And yeah. he's really kind of torn up inside. The single worst moment in this movie is when he dies. Because I'm like, yeah. come on, Marvel. You find every time you get like the Killmonger, Tony Leon character, where like there's a compelling villain, why do you kill these guys in yeah. the first time they're on screen? Yeah, uh, I think there was a real arc to even go past this movie with, and they chose not to do it. But I thought he was phenomenal. Um, and you're right. I mean, it, it, he just, I mean, quite honestly, like every scene he was in, like everyone else got blown off the screen. Yeah. Um, and I kind of figured that would be the case, but seeing it, and I hope American audiences do appreciate. It. I mean, this is really the first time he's worked with an American crew um, for a film, and. You know, this guy's been doing this for 30 some odd years, but uh, yeah, it, in some ways, I hear what you're saying. He was almost so powerful that like Simu Lu didn't have a chance in some yeah. of these scenes. Um, but, you know, for me, I was like, that was that was kind of one of the things I took from the movie that I loved the most. Now, 
you, okay, we talk a lot about trailers and a lot about promotion with part of this film. I think this really hurt. The, the, the marketing to me, I love your opinion, it only focused on really the westernized modern action. That's yeah. all the, to me, the primary drive of the commercials. That mm. is not what this movie is. Yeah. This is an Asian kind of mythical, fantastical epic. Yeah. I just wish Disney had actually leaned a little bit more into that because I think it might have, A, piqued the interest. I mean, obviously the movie's done well. Yeah. I think yeah. people might have gone in with a little better more. expectation of what they were going to see. Yeah. If they would have been a little bit more serious with some of those scenes and put it in the trailer, almost like a crouching tiger, hidden dragon. I don't know, just yes. a, less, yes. less the action and more the emotional connection between father and son, him and his wife, things of that nature. I think it would have probably worked out a little better in terms of more interest and more seriousness into this, uh, this movie. But Alas, it's, it's still doing very, very well in the theaters. But I think it's doing well because the word of the once word of mouth, the word definitely. got out, people were like, definitely. you got to see this. But yeah, I yeah, think yeah. Disney actually hurt the cause a little bit on the way. I thought, so the trail, now you should go watch it. The Run It trailer, the last one I told you not to watch. Mm -hmm. That one does have that. The last kind of third with like sort of the epic battle with the creatures, it is shown. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, if you had kind of, maybe not show me that much, but yeah. shown more of that mood. I actually think this movie might have had even a little bit more buzz going in, but it's obviously done done pretty well. And like for people like yourself, mm -hmm. your expectations might have been changed a little bit as to what you were going to see. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Would you have wanted to see Shang-Chi's mission to go kill whomever his father sent him to kill and see sort of like, sort of that Bourne sort of, uh, Jason Bourne sort of uh, mm -hmm. a flashback of him going. And then at the end, when he tells her that, you know, spoiler alert, that he does kill him. I would have wanted to see him in that mission and him, the flashback before he killed him or, or, or something, flashbacks of him actually, um, sort of uh, at towards the end, I guess, um, reveal that he did kill him and not let us know like during the, you know, I don't know if I'm explaining it, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, flashback of that mission and then towards the end, let us know that he actually did kill it until, uh, instead of just telling us he did. I have a theory that you are see it. And We're they deliberately see it. left it out of this movie because of the way to me, Shang-Chi in this movie is positioned as a very incomplete character. He's positioned as kind of, he has the raw talent. You're clearly told at the end that his mother was sort of subtly chaining him his whole life in this special martial art that yeah. even his father isn't really able to master. Mm -hmm. But I think the movie leaves you, I think, with the impression that he has a lot of development maturation and i would argue even fighting skill work to do i'll get back to that when we talk about the cut scenes so i'm gonna guess very similar i think to the jason Bourne movies you don't get the full training flashback in born identity mm -hmm. you actually remember because in born identity when he gets his memory back he only remembers the assassination on the boat that's yes. what he remembers yeah. but by the third movie he remembers the full training scene yes, at the yeah. building in New York. I would bet the Shang-Chi, because that moment is clearly one of the things that makes him not Captain America, right? The fact that he has gone over the line yeah. and done something he can't take back, I think will become something you do see play out in Shang-Chi 2, 3, somewhere along the line. And, uh, you know, for the most part, most people seem to agree that the third act was kind of weak. I'll say this. If, let's say for some reason I couldn't help myself and I fell asleep during the second act and woke up during the third, I would have been, I would have thought I was in a double feature with Correct. freaking, um, what's that movie called? 
Pacific Lion, the Rim and, three or Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I, that's what I would thought. Of. Yeah, I, I, I think that I think they overdid it with that. Um, but what did you? What, what were your thoughts on that scene? Well, that sequence. So, hey. Yeah, so I actually liked it. Um, this was the part where I said, like, I think if you rewatch the movie, having seen it now twice, I think the second half flows better because you know this is coming. Like, up until the point where they actually go to Tao, you're kind of like, is this a movie from the streets? Like, is this a movie that's going to be on skyscrapers and on buses? And like, is that, are we going to be when it pivots to morris is going to take you to the hidden city and it becomes a race to this fantastical world like the first time i watched it i was like wait what like what are yeah. we doing yeah but the second time because i knew they were going to do it i was like all right now i'm like i'm ready and like i'm going to switch modes into fantasy yeah the reason why i actually like it is because i feel like once you make that choice you have to commit like, if you then try to tell me that everything is grounded and real, I'm going to laugh at you. Yeah, at that yeah, point, yeah, it's yeah. like, you're, we're so far into the mystique and the magic of this that, like, I think bringing dragons out of the water is kind of like, yeah, that actually makes sense at that point. Like, we're <laughs> so far down that path, you might yeah, as well yeah. swing. And yeah. so I even think, like I said, I think, the, I think that whole kaiju battle is also, I think, a nod to both Asian cinema history, you know, Godzilla movies, but also Western perception of Asian cinema. There's always, there's always these months, right? Like, I think there's this very clever sort of juxtaposition there that they're trying to give you. Although, I also wonder if it's something that's like meant to signal uh, maybe a little something else that Marvel intends to do with this, right? Because as we find out in the cutscene, Ten Rings are signaling someone somewhere, and at least in one of the comic arcs, dragon race in space is one of those things so one would wonder did we actually see that you know at the end of this movie maybe we maybe fin fang foom i don't know maybe that's actually out there space for the future so you know marvel never does anything by accident but i actually i th look it's not my it's my least favorite fight scene of the movie but given how much they were i mean once they started showing you the guardian lions and the nine tailed and the dragon horse i'm kind of like well you better pay this off like you can't just have these things walking around yeah. so i was actually okay with it for for that reason what did, did you enjoy the fight scenes as uh, i i didn't I, as i already said i didn't really enjoy them that much because it's like we've been there we've seen that before probably just in a different the scaffolding was something new but it wasn't any thing groundbreaking that I haven't seen before. What I haven't seen in a long, long time is like, like good martial arts. Like I've, we've talked about this in the past in terms of some of the best martial arts scene. For me, one of the best is best of the best because the martial arts fighting in there is, is just, I, I, I loved it. Um, Bruce Lee type fighting where you're actually getting two guys fighting, you know, and showing off their technique. This was just more like, hup, 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 you know, is, I don't know. What did you think about the fight scenes? Well, they clearly made a conscious decision not to try for that. Um, and in fact, I, I, I wound up listening. I didn't. I deliberately did not listen to interviews prior to watching the movie. I went back after I watched it the first time, and I listened to interviews with Des and Daniel Cretton. I listened to a podcast with Dave Callahan, um, who, who is Asian, even though his name is Dave Callahan, who yeah, wrote yeah. this movie. Um, it was clear to me that they viewed the mission statement here as Shang-Chi originated in the comics as a racial stereotype. And we need to remake the identity of this character from the ground up. And I think um, Destin Cretton made a comment about because Shang-Chi was obviously inspired you know, at the origin by the Bruce Lee sort of taking Hollywood by storm. Mm -hmm. And he said, Bruce Lee's fingerprints are all over this movie, but there's only one Bruce Lee. I think that kind of sums up what this movie did not try to do, which was it deliberately did not try to out Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, which you and I might have actually wanted to see them try that. Yeah. But it's clear from the outset, they said, we are going to do an homage more to Jackie Chan and to sort of Asian Wuxia sort of epics like House of Flying Daggers, Hero, Crouching Tiger, Hidden and we're going to kind of, you know, 
nod to that as opposed to make something brand new and, and groundbreak. So I will say this, the minute I saw, when I was watching the first time, the minute I saw the first sort of balletic fight scene between Wen Wu and Bala Chen, mm -hmm. that was when I was, okay, I was like, I think I know what they're doing. And it's, and I immediately, like, for me, I was like, we're not gonna get, yeah. we're not gonna get the revolutionary mano a mano fight scene. They are doing like a, you know, tribute to all of these great films. And mm -hmm. you saw it, I mean, the bus scene, when you see it in its entirety, I mean, that really is like a Jackie Chan movie. And yeah, some yeah, of the yeah. camera shots where they zoom out, you see him kind of doing his flying kick from one section of the bus to the other, like, I mean, it's straight out of Asian cinema, but it's just updated into a, it's San yeah. Francisco. So, you know, I, I know where we stand on that. I wound up being okay with it, but like I said, I, it definitely was like, all right, I have to reset my bar a little bit because it's just clear they're not trying for it. Yeah. So tell me about um, Aquafina and and her role. I mean, like like mm -hmm. I said, I enjoyed her, her role up until Wong invited her into the room with with other Avengers and stuff. Like, what's I I I just this sidekick thing sort of bothers me somewhat, you know, because it's like. Tell me your thoughts on that. So I think Aquafina is the avatar. Or the white savior in most Asian centric movies in Hollywood. And it's meant to basically show you how silly that is. That's my yeah. theory. I haven't heard her say this, but that's my theory. So if you think about like Last Samurai, Great Wall, typically when they do these movies, you have the one Caucasian dude mm -hmm. who goes into Asian culture assimilates something that they've been doing for thousands of years in a matter of like minutes yeah, yeah. and then saves the day for yeah. all of them as if they couldn't do anything to help themselves. Yeah, That's yeah. pretty much what that looks like. Yeah, I think she's that character because she basically is pulled along for the ride. She's pulled into the world. So she's the outsider. Mm -hmm. She has no skills really of any kind. Yeah. And yet, when she goes to Talo, she learns how to shoot bow, bow and arrow within like three days, mm -hmm. we're told, is three days, right, before yeah, Wenwu yeah. shows up, to where she can make the most clutch shot in the <laughs> history of their civilization. And then she is now like basically part of the Avengers team. I think it's meant to literally just show you like, do you understand how silly this is every yeah. time we've had to watch this for the last hundred years? That's my yeah. theory. Yeah. They just did it with an Asian comedic character to like underline how ridiculous. Yeah. That's my theory. It felt too, it felt like it was happening too often in the movie with her to be like an accident. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. That, those were one of the things that bothered me. But outside of that, because the I, arrow I, shot is so preposterous. Yeah, it is preposterous that yeah, she could yeah. learn how to do that in three days and hit the mark. Like, it's just yeah, like, yeah. 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 yeah that, that, I, but outside of those things, I enjoyed the movie. I like the movie. It's definitely not in my top five. Yeah. Um, perhaps where is we, it for you? About. I mean, if we were do, if we were talking all origin films. Oh, you can do every however you want. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's all the movies that we've seen in the MCU, this would probably be top ten for sure. Okay, that's top still pretty good. Sure. Of yeah. twenty five films, that's still yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top ten for sure. What did you think? of the basically what was the Marvel mea culpa for Trevor Slattery. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it, it was, it was done really well. Um, it certainly made up for Iron Man three. And I enjoyed it. I didn't have an issue with it. it, it I loved he, it. Yeah. 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 I, I definitely, his, his comic relief was, was, was better. I, in, for me, than than Aquafina's actually. Uh, I would agree with that because I think it was less expected. Um, 
But I, I loved it when he showed up because, and then when it became clear, he was actually, so when he was sitting in this, in the, I don't know what that was, the makeup room downstairs yeah, with yeah, Morris. Yeah, yeah. At first I was like, are we getting, like, are they just being cheeky with us? But then when it became clear that he was going to go on the mission with them and some of the, like his thing on Planet of the Apes is hilarious. But, yeah. <laughs> but it felt really, I don't know. It was one of the things where I like appreciated Marvel for basically saying, we know we screwed this up yeah, and we're not going to pretend like it never happened. Yeah. yeah exactly. We're actually going to write it into yeah. Yeah. the narrative. And I was like, I appreciate that. I respect it. And so it just gave me this like positive feeling when he then continued to be silly um, yes. to the, to the very end. So, you know, yeah. it, it was, I, it's funny. I, I, <laughs> They did a very good job of hiding not just that he was in it, but also that like he was actually a real character in this movie. Like he was yeah. but in this movie more than he was in the other in Iron Man Three. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah he, I, he, I, was I he was hilarious. He was hilarious. What yeah, did I mean, you? Oh, man. sorry. So I have other questions for you. Uh -huh. Easter eggs. What was your favorite or least favorite? kind of drop that they put in here like in terms of you know you've got wong and blonsky but we are definitely given more than what the trailer suggested so i want to get your reaction to how that was framed what about black the black widow versus extremis fight that's going on there as well um and then yeah obviously like in kind of the end credit scenes like some of the teases for where where we might be headed with the 10 rings and kind of what that what that might mean with emil blasky and wong uh, there's certainly something going on there first of all i don't know how them two got together but certain there's this you would be led to believe that wong is sort of showing him how to fight i guess or I guess be more. I don't know. I mean, he's he's certainly showing him how to, I guess, um, think while he, instead of being a raging beast and just pummeling things, I guess he's showing him how to fight and think a bit. Um, where Do you think he's working with Contessa to train Blonsky for the Thunderbolts? Because there's that cell he takes him back to. Yes, um, and he's clearly teach. He's clearly mentoring. Him yes, yes, something. yes. That's the word I was looking for. He was mentoring. It's unclear to me how Wong would help Contessa and what Contessa would tell him to do and why. Why do it? I don't know. That's unclear to me. It, it certainly leaves a lot of questions to ask um, in terms of that relationship and how all that went down. So obviously he knows him because he calls him by his name, Emil. Mm -hmm. Tim Roth admitted that he did, like he doesn't, have, he has like two words, but Tim Roth said he did the audio. Yes, for, yes, for yes. Sure. So we're definitely getting a Thunderbolts movie. I don't know how far down the line, how soon that will be, but certainly it's being built up. Uh, but the beacon or is the, the 10 rings is summoning some thing or someone. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos of, of possible of the possibility that it may be Galactus. I don't think so. Nah, I don't think so. Um, it just doesn't make sense for it to be him. Um, the only person that would summon him to Earth would be Silver Surfer, and that's what yeah. I would like to see. Yeah, they. Well, I don't think they'll mess with that either. Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, I was trying to look for clues for Iron Fist and Kung Lung. I know they mentioned that Talo is one of the cities. Yep. In uh, of of of. I don't know. Seven they said cities. they said they said seven cities. Well, there's seven cities, yeah. Which Kunlun is basically like a sister city of Talo. So in theory, like that would be a window to yes introducing the Iron Fist if they wanted. Yeah. Yes. So that's promising, and I hope at some point we get to see that. Being that we're you know we might get a a, 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 a 
a scene with, with Charlie Cox and his Daredevil um, character. Um, what was the other one? There was another Easter egg that you had mentioned. Oh, I was asking you about um, they had one of the Black Widows from Black Widow ah. fighting an extremist soldier. Yes. Uh, I, 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 I can't tell you what that is. I, th I can only speculate that these Black Widows, they don't know what to do with their lives. <laughs> as, as well as the extremist people, they don't know what to do. So they're going to take advantage of this and, and try to earn money, whatever, and fight. Low level um, fights. That's yeah, what he said. It, it, Tough. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's just a, a throwaway sort of fun thing that they put in there, but nothing to look okay. forward to in the future. They did say, so I did read up the, the widow that's in that scene apparently is in Black Widow, though it's, you know, one of 20 or whatever. She apparently is the world champion of Wushu right now. Oh, wow. So she apparently could kick everybody's ass. <laughs> that was in the movie, but I Word. thought that was pretty cool. So, um, oh. What was I going to ask you? Okay, so yeah, I was going to ask you, what do you want the beacon to point to then? Like, what would be cool? I don't know. It's hard to tell because the Ten Rings from the comics belong to Fing Fang Fung, correct? Yes, correct. And, and you said that it might be that might be calling out to that character of the comics to come for it. I don't know. Maybe they retcon and, 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 and changes origins. That would make the most sense to me. There have been, um, there was one theory is that no one seems to know where this comes from. And they were very deliberate not to tell you that in the movie. They give you a lot of narration and they left out everything about the origin of the Ten Rings. One theory that people are saying that, oh, one person has said, I think is a uh, comics is claimed Rob. He, he mentioned that it could possibly be something that hasn't been created yet um, and was left in that era for, you know, and this guy happens to come upon it and it could be Kang related. I don't know. Well, I was going to ask you that because the obviously the scene in which they reveal that is a scene that has both Bruce Banner and Carol Danvers mm -hmm. looking at it along with yeah. one. That would seem to point you to this is more of an Avenge, like a, a, an Avengers issue than a Shang-Chi issue. Yes, yes. So... You might be could right. Be, it just could be king. Did you find it interesting that Banner was not Hulk or Professor Hulk? Oh, so the funny thing is, we I was trying to ask you this on our last pod without spoiling it. Remember how I was saying, like, what do you think about Mark Ruffalo not being the Hulk? I had already seen the movie. I yeah, knew yeah, he yeah. wasn't the Hulk anymore. Yeah, I was yeah. like, what do you think of him? Just... <laughs> I have no idea. But he clearly found a way to reverse the effect. And uh, he looks much older. Much older, by the way. Yeah. It would be interesting to have him explain why he didn't want to why he wanted that separation or why he wanted to revert back to being just a regular human being, sort of. Um, I'm hoping that when he does become the Hulk again, that he's not in a sling, because this sling thing has, has me messed up in terms of the Hulk not having, having a gimp arm. That just doesn't make sense to me. I'm assuming this, I'm assuming or guessing that whatever you saw in that credit scene gets addressed in the She-Hulk series. I mean, it's my best guess as to what, where they would try to, exp if, if that's kind of the de facto handoff of the role in some capacity, yeah. uh, that's where I would think he would explain what happened. And like I said, maybe we're in a world where Bruce Banner exists, but no longer somehow has kind of extracted the gamma radiation and no longer has the Hulk within him anymore. I don't know. I just, it, it, it was very notable to see him in that form because they didn't have to do it that way. Yeah. Um, so out of five, four stars, out of five stars, what would you give this movie? Shang-Chi. 
Well, hey, before 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 we get to that, yeah, I was going to okay. ask you. Um, yeah, a couple couple of things. So I think we agree on this, but MVP of the movie, Tony Tony Leone. Oh, yeah, not even. <laughs> so if he's the MVP of the movie and he dies, my I want to go through. This is my biggest nitpick with the film. And I want to ask you. For, where do you take Simu Liu in Shang Chi Two, and is Shang Chi too powerful as a character at the end of this movie? I think if the Avengers, if he's part of the Avengers, and the Avengers are going to use him, it would be for recon and go on missions to find. And he would—that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Where Nick Fury knows of him, and Nick Fury uses him. Or the Avengers use him. Um, that's the only because you're right. After this, what does he do after this? He's a, he he's part of the Avengers. If they go to Shang Chi two, which I would assume is not going to be for some time, what is he going to do? That's the only thing that makes sense to me. So, Jim Starlin, who co-created the character, had posited this idea that. Shang-Chi would inherit the Steve Rogers mantle of kind of leadership within the Avengers. There is no way that this character at the end of this movie is ready for that responsibility. Oh, no. Right? So I'm not saying that's what the goal is. That's the writer just throwing that out there. But I would say, and it's a good time to talk about Simu Liu, this character needs some work. It's oh, not yes. all his fault. No. I just think, like, if we were, I don't think the comparison to Black Panther is totally fair only because Chadwick was in Civil War yes. before he got Black Panther. But Chadwick Boseman's grasp of T'Challa from the minute he became the character was stronger than this portrayal. Some of that's by design, but I think some of that's by experience. Chadwick mm -hmm. Boseman is a more experienced actor with yeah. more acclaim. Yeah. Simu Liu in this movie is most comfortable when he's sitting at the table being his character from King's Convenience. You can tell that in yeah. dialogue. He's yeah. least comfortable when he's being the dramatic boy absolutely right. for Tony Leon. Right. So yeah, yeah. in Shang-Chi 2, he has to get there, yeah. I think, for this character to really rise. And here's my, I'm going to put this out there, and I wonder if they're going to go with this. I don't think they're going to let him use the Ten Rings for a lot of Shang-Chi too. I think part of the reason that they discover the beacon in the end is so that he has to get better without that as a crutch. Because I would yeah. argue he is too strong with the 10 rings. He basically is like Superman with yeah, the yeah, 10 yeah. rings. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. by the way, he might be immortal considering that his dad was a thousand years old wearing the rings. Yeah. So the only way this character really works for me is if he is split from the rings and Shang-Chi. He will be, yes. And forced to develop his fighting, his leadership, his character. And oh, by the way, he's probably going to have to go up against his sister in the second one. Oh, definitely. You're right on, on all those points regarding his character and his, I guess, growing up that he has to do in order for him to be A, a part of this team and B, a leader. Um, if he is supposed to have some sort of influence over them. Um, when it's when it comes to the more dramatic uh, aspects of his character, you have a, not that you don't believe him, but you have a tough, tough time feeling what he's feeling because he's not there yet, I think, as an actor. Um, what and, did you and, think of his? Oh, sorry, go ahead. And 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 the whole purpose of yes, taking the ten rings, the Avengers is not going to let him just walk around with them anymore. That's it. The Avengers got it. They're studying this. He he he's not using them. So this certainly sets him up to be on his own without the ten rings, having to, I I guess, be the best version of himself without that so I, i'm hoping that in the next shang chi the next shang chi movie they think about how they're going to approach his character and how they're going to develop him as an actor 
to for us the audience to really believe him to because Chris Evans there's nobody there's nobody that's going to replace his uh I guess every time Captain America spoke to his team you're like yeah let's go <laughs> I think I don't think Simu Liu is there yet no, but I think that was the beauty of Steve Rogers is that one of the least one of the least super powered characters in the Avengers commanded the room like that to where people yeah. really. But the difference was, and I do think this is one thing I'm really intrigued with is, you know, Steve Rogers pre serum was still the guy who jumped on the grenade to save yeah. everyone. Yeah. This guy killed somebody on the orders of his father. That's a very different origin. And I think you can do something with that to where. I realized the writer, it's funny, I listened to Dave Callan say, like, he basically, when they gave him the pitch to write Shang-Chi, they said, well, he's the master of Kung Fu. And Callahan was like, oh my God, no. Like, I don't want to do that. But I do think the path is if they want to make him closer to that, if they want to unlock the chi, which they didn't really explore in this movie as like yeah. a power, but he has yeah. it in the comics. I think that the way you do that is you take the 10 rings away from him and force him with a challenge, he has to rise to another level of skill. And that's how he does it to where then when he gets the rings back, presumably in some team up movie or later on, now he's able to do some things that maybe even his dad couldn't do. Right. Um, so I think there's there's definitely material there, but I think there's also work to do. I was trying to think of starting points and I kind of was like, look, you know, it's not a fair compare to Robert Downey and Iron Man. He was a much older, better actor when he started. Right. But I think the template is Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth was a nobody with nothing on his resume when he got the Thor part. He has become one of the shining stars in terms of his range as an actor in the yeah. MCU. And it includes comedic and it includes dramatic. I think Simu Liu needs, that's the route we're looking for. If he can get there in the next couple of films, um, I think we could be looking at, at something great. I did want to, what did you think of his, so Shang-Chi's, siblings is a thing in the comics but i think what they did was smart shang chi has five siblings i believe in the comic mm -hmm. and in this movie they just said hey we'll make it one we'll make it one sister i had never heard of menger zhang before this movie she said she had never done martial arts of any kind until four months before the shoot wow. i thought she was awesome yeah, i don't know yeah, what your yeah. impressions were of her or like and what did you think of leaving her as what what is she at the end of this movie is she good is she bad is she in between what what are we looking at well that's going to be one of the interesting uh things that uh sort of think about when we go into the next film and what sort of organization she's uh, building is she building a an organization similar to what her father was in terms of conquering whatever he set his eyes on or is this is this something that she steps on on a path to sort of, I guess, empower women and, and, and another Black Widow-esque sort of organization. I don't know. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to, to sort of uh, see in its next uh, film if she is in it. But I'm she pretty said sure she she's will. she said she or well, she hinted that she's signed or she's signed or involved in something beyond this movie. So okay. I, I, so, so she she might have her hand in a few things, not necessarily in the Shang Chi two film, but in other uh, films as well, where she may not play a prominent role, but you'll know that the Ten Rings are involved and she's behind it. See, she felt like I don't know. She felt like somebody that Contessa might cross paths with at some point like you need the resources you need like this organization isn't all bad the way it was but it's not going to be all good i mean let's be yeah. honest like this character said hey at 16 i'm founding an underground fighting ring yeah. you know in, in macau and and i always wanted to be you know kind of where the boys were and that's why she's now instead of shutting down the operation is now running it and i would point out by the way another stereotype they flip which i thought was clever was most in, in a lot of sort of Western action movies, they usually have like the Asian henchmen in the crew. Mm -hmm. If you notice in this, from Florian Monato on down, a lot of the henchmen are actually Caucasian underneath the Asian. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes, not yes, an yes. accident, I don't think either. Um, but yeah, I have a feeling that Shang Chi's going to have to go head to head with her. But it's she's not always going to be on the wrong side. This feels like yeah. a very like middle of the road Great, character right, that can yeah. go either way. So I was yeah. impressed. I thought it was a good, 
way to adapt the comics from from what they uh what they had so yeah. um i want to favorite so favorite fight scene did you have a favorite fight scene or were you just down kind of down across the board on 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 them my favorite fight scene although it didn't result into anything um was tony leong and in in his future wife okay so that's your favorite one i would probably say the skyscraper i enjoyed the Kind of the the acrobatics and even though it was shorter than i wanted the one-on-one -on -one with death dealer i thought yeah. was pretty fun so that's probably was that probably was my my favorite one so i've heard a lot of people still like seeing the bus scene i guess i feel like that got ruined for me in the trailer yeah i mean <laughs> I they didn't really show anything new outside of, i mean you pretty you pretty much saw the fight scene yeah so um perhaps because of the dude that was videotaping and he was pretty funny um, but yeah, I was expecting more out of seen uh, out of his character okay. in terms of his ability, not necessarily, you know, fighting regular dudes, but one-on-one, -on -one, I was expecting more, more, I guess, posturing and, and gotcha. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I miss that. And when you watch Bruce Lee, that's why Bruce Lee films are so unique in that you see the style you see the the the, the change in in, in, in. It, it, it's not just so it's not fast paced you see someone dominating at some point and in this is just real quick nothing that i haven't seen before especially watching jackie chan films all my life you huh? know i wasn't impressed i will be like as, as i said at the same time they, they made a very deliberate choice I think the door is open for this. I think if the, I'd be curious to see what Shang Chi Two looks like from a fighting perspective. I have a hunch it might be a little different because I think this was so intent on paying tribute to what's come before. Yeah. I wonder if the second one might be like almost a little more Winter Soldier. Like you know, Winter Soldier pivoted from historical period piece to very modern action. I wonder if they do something like, like that with this, which may give you what you want just in the future. Yeah. Um, or let's do rating and then we'll do box office because I think box office has become a whole other story now. So I'm at, uh, obviously you guys can tell, I'm at four and a half stars out of five. Um, I think, this, I, is, I think yeah. this is, this is, I can't give it five for the reasons I just said, the critiques I have, but this is very satisfying. I think when it's on TNT and TBS, this is a movie that I'm going to be watching five to 10 minutes of a lot. When it comes okay. Up. I give it a three and a half. Okay. I go to three and a half because of all the things that I, I was hoping to see and I didn't see it. And not to say that they didn't achieve a lot of great things in this film. I just think that would they could have taken it a little bit further. Um, I don't know if it's me getting a little bit or I'm a bit over the, the comic relief in, in, in these films. I, I, I want a little bit of more of that seriousness. Uh, mm. I think the goofier some of these things, not to say that this movie was goofy at, at, at any point, but the humor in these films, uh, I don't know if I'm losing my sense of humor. <laughs> you sound, you sound like a Warner Brothers executive <laughs> right now. That's what you sound like. <laughs> I just want a little bit more seriousness in these films, man, because uh, I don't know. I just don't want I, I just don't want this to be a, like a PG, PG-13. I want not to say I want a rated R film, but I want them to be a little bit more edgier, you know? Okay. I think that's a tough ask in the Disney world, but, yeah. um, you know, you can even see like Eternals. They're, they've been very careful to have wise cracking one-liners oh, in every oh, yeah, one of fine. their trailers, yeah, yeah, yeah. even though that seems very serious otherwise. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Hey, there's nothing, um, although it had its humor, Captain America Winter Soldier was on, it was, it was edgy. It was edgy. It was, it, and, and the action sequences were dope. The fight sequences, I liked that, that fight sequence with him, with him and Batroc. Was, I, I loved it, you know, and 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 that's what I sort of want to see that 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 skill when somebody's challenging someone, and the guy's just un, unbeatable, you know. But we'll see. Well, I think well, this is a, for a whole other discussion. I think the distinction you're pointing out, which I would tend to agree with, is there's a difference between your core characters having a sense of humor and a character who's there to provide comic relief. Those are not the same thing. 
Yeah. Right. So Anthony Mackie delivering a couple one-liners alongside Steve Rogers works in yeah. Winter Soldier because he's also a main dramatic character. Yeah, yeah. Trevor Slattery is only there <laughs> for com for comedic purposes. That's a yeah. different choice. So I, yeah. I hear what you're saying. That and that yeah. changes the 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 dial on how funny or unfunny uh a, a movie a movie can be so anyway four and a half three and a half let's talk about box office because i think this has become a really big story and kind of a cool mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. so 75 and a half million is the official friday to sunday tally way higher than what we oh, thought yeah, yeah, right yeah. 45 to 55 was initial projection this is higher than f9 uh it is not quite at the black widow level but it's close which was 80 mm -hmm. and including labor day projecting over 90 million in four days for a character who had never been on screen before, had no backstory with, with fans and no toys or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And you're doing it with, you know, Delta variant still keeping a lot of theaters closed. I mean, Marvel's got, I mean, Disney's got to be absolutely cartwheeling exactly. after this weekend. I mean, it's huge numbers. And the yes. word of mouth is incredible. On this oh, yeah, I, yeah. I bet this thing's going to stick. Like, I don't think oh, yeah. like next weekend, I would guess if with 75, it. I'm going to guess it's probably 45 to 50 next weekend, which is a great hold, like a 35% drop as That's opposed to Black Widow, which was like 65. Yeah. This movie is going to make money. Like I, even oh, without yeah. China, this movie is going to make money. Now. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah, a oh, yeah. huge I mean, deal. Right now, globally is 120, 30. I forget what it was. What that I think is. it's even higher now. I think they're saying like 156, 160, something like that. Yeah, even yeah, without China. It's definitely huge. Um, and on the uh, announcement of these numbers and how well it's doing, Sony got a little bit of confidence in 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 in. in <laughs> And releasing Venom this, yeah. a little bit earlier. Yeah, moved it up um, two weeks. Yeah. yeah, wow. So I'm gonna definitely check that out just because, and not that I have I'm ex I have the same excitement for it as I did with Shang Chi and as I have for Eternals, but I'm definitely gonna check it out just to see what Sony's up to and what they're trying to do for future films. But it's interesting. It also just, yeah. yeah, it was like it also just guaranteed that Eternals is gonna be theater only. Yes, I would be stunned if there's a day and date option. Oh no, 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 that's not happening. That's not happening. I think I don't know when they'll do the screening or the premiere for this. Obviously, probably like a week before uh, it actually uh, releases. But I, I, I'm interested in, in 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 hearing what people have to say about the Eternals because from what we've seen, we think is going to be something amazing, and I'm psyched for this movie. Yeah, I, but I would say there's not a lot big on the calendar until October. That's why I think Shang-Chi is going to do really well for itself now because there's just not a big tentpole yeah. competing with it. And I think part of what Sony's looking at is like it was a wake-up call that, hey, if you have the right product and people like what they see, people are going to come out still. It, wait, it's a whole other discussion, but October 1st gets you one week ahead of No Time to Die. I think Sony was thinking, okay, if there is an audience for film, we do not want to be behind Daniel Craig's last bond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's going to be a, like much more of a knife fight, I think, for audience. And like, whereas Shang Chi now is just, I think it's going to sail for a couple of weeks. Oh yeah, definitely. It doesn't have anything yeah. yet. Nothing to compete with. I, I think the difference between Shang Chi and 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 Venom, I think the water muff is not going to probably be as good. We'll see. But Venom probably comes in a little hotter because it's a second, it's a sequel, not a yeah, not yeah. an origin. So yeah. But yeah, um Shang Chi has arrived. And um, although many, many, many people love the film, um, and not to say I didn't enjoy the film i did enjoy it but i had my issues with it and i was expecting a little bit of a different movie not to say that the movie was bad either but you know um they gave us what they gave us they gave us uh, uh, uh they gave this version of the film for a reason and hopefully this is just the beginning of him coming into his own um hopefully in the next iteration of shang chi that he is he becomes this master that um certainly wasn't displayed in this film for me in, in my opinion so yeah so i i am obviously higher than pablo pablo was 
above yeah. me on Black Widow. I am above him on this movie. I would tell you very enthusiastically, go see this movie. I think it's uh, one of the one of the better things that Marvel Marvel has put out. Um, and uh, wow, I mean, it was just it just like I said, it was nice to see something and want to see it again. But now we're now we're waiting for Eternals, and that I think for us has been the one we think is going to be best of all of everything that comes out this year. So. So we'll see. But I think the other thing too is, yeah, look, I mean, number numbers don't lie. Right. And so the other thing with a character like this is if the box office hadn't been there, then his role in the future MCU probably would have been downgraded. I mean, there's no way around it. Now you're going to see Shang-Chi. I mean, that's the bottom line. He's going to, yeah. whether it's in team up form, whether it's in solo film, this is certified that this character can play on a mass global scale. And that's, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm excited about that because this movie... We need new characters. We yeah, need new yeah, characters. Definitely. Right? And this definitely. is a new ca new characters. You know, people talk about representation. This is very organic, right? Like this is an organic form of representation and having something that's, you know, potentially cool and different on the board. So I'm excited for what they can do with it. But, but I'm with you as well. Like Shang Chi also has to. They can't rest on it either. It's got to get yeah. better than the second one. Yeah. Let me ask you this: With all this multiverse thing happening. We don't know where these 10 rings come from. Who is it summoning? Is it all getting a little bit too, mm -hmm. not necessarily confusing, but is it beginning to be too much to sort of keep up with? Yeah, look, I mean, this is definitely, so this goes to my point about is Shang-Chi too powerful? Because there's definitely this feel of, look, we're going to space and we're going through time. And now we're dealing with Kang. And now we're dealing with this power in the 10 rings that's existed for God knows how long. And now we're going to have Eternals. Maybe I... Marvel does have a challenge, I think, in trying to sort out um, making all of its characters functional within that world right so it's like did they superpower shang chi in part because otherwise they were afraid that like look you put him in a fight with kang and nobody's gonna believe he's got a chance or if you put him in a fight against captain marvel or somebody like that or, or like a captain marvel level opponent he couldn't possibly hold his own even though in the comics he can um it is a challenge because you're gonna have like an ant-man on one side and you're gonna have you know even even like a black panther it's still kind of a guy it's a, it's a guy with powers or a girl with powers but it's not at the level of like captain marvel flying you know and having mm. sort of cosmic abilities and then wanda is obviously out there now sort of fully unleashed and maybe doc strange is at that level so i hear you there is risk i would say loki is a very good sign that they have a handle on what they're trying to accomplish here but yeah like if you try to project what avengers 4 or avengers 5 looks like it is definitely a very different board in terms of the powers and the capabilities of who's going to be on both sides of that fight. Because when you think about the prior films and everything that led up to Endgame, pretty much all the films were leading you towards that. With these newer films, there's so many different directions. Thunderbolts, the multiverse. Now we don't know what this is. The, what is this thing calling? It's right. just a lot of things to sort of uh, think about and where it all leads to. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's sort of not frustrating, but it's like, you know, where's where's this all going? Perhaps I mean, this is it, it, they 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 want you to feel this way, but I think so yeah. because you know that they know what they want to get done. Yeah. that's the thing right you you know that this question has been kicked around the parliament a thousand times and they've already made their choice for where they want to generally end up we don't know and we're having a tough time filling in all the blanks because there's so much more that we have to process now but you know at this point you kind of have to trust like for them to go down this path at all which they didn't have to do it was still plenty in the comics that wasn't multiversal but then to go down this path they had to have had an idea of where they wanted to get to so at this point you just have to say you know 
Had Loki not happened, it's interesting, had Loki not happened, I'd be more concerned. But Loki was so good at exposition, so good at explaining, and Kang's intro was done so well. Yeah. I guess I'm more in the camp of, I trust you again until you, until you deliver me a dud of a movie that I can't understand that makes me wonder what's happening. And maybe No Way Home will be that movie. But that would be Sony's fault. Yeah. Yeah, but that so that'll be the next. <laughs> see, I don't think Eternals is going to let us down in that regard. But No Way Home might cause you to ask a few questions. Yeah, I think, and we may be wrong, but I'd certainly put down money that No Way Home is not. You're going to feel the way the way I felt for Shang Chi, and how I feel now. You're going to feel for No Way Home. You're going to be so excited. And then when this movie comes out, you're going to be like, eh, I was expecting this and I didn't get this. And it wasn't a good movie because of it. My For fear, me. like I said, yeah. And my fear is that like in the storytelling and the rush to get all these characters on screen again, that they just leave a plot hole so big that it screws, it starts to screw up or at least call into question other stuff, right? Because the Loki thing was very tight, very tight in how they laid out the world so if you have a like if there's a sony writer out there who they let through who like puts something in there where you're like what that makes <laughs> no sense but now it has ramifications across the multiverse they got to then fix that that's yeah. my fear with with yeah. this sort of stuff you know yeah man um yeah the next movie we got to look forward to obviously is venom but that's more sony thing i, I sort of keep that in a separate uh situation but after that, we get the Eternals, and that is the movie that I am looking forward to seeing and how this is going to sort of uh, tell the story of the next phase of, of the Avengers and possibly the mutants and other celestial beings like Galactus and things of that nature. Let's we'll see if that uh, plays out. But ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for today. Shang-Chi, um, for many, great movie. Um, for the very few, good movie. I, <laughs> I, I'm in the good movie situation. Um, yeah, that's my that's my take. And um, Brian, any last words until we uh, we're done? No, other than it was just great. Like I said, great to see a movie that people came out for. And like I said, we got Venom in October, Eternals in November, Spider Man in December. Looks like now we can get our calendar. We don't have to worry about moving things around so yeah. you know one a month for these blockbusters feels feels pretty great and um pretty just pretty excited to see that and all the other stuff no time to die dune should be a pretty busy end to the to the year here so shout out to aj because he felt the same way i did <laughs> <laughs> um it'll be interesting to have him on the show one day so that he can talk about what he thought about some of uh, these films that we go see um but yeah that's our show for today please hit that like and subscribe button and hit and let us know in the comment section below what you thought of shang chi um did you have similar issues with the film did you love the film did you think the movie was okay what what were you expecting from the film let us know in the comment section below and we'll see you next time on the gen review okay.